G'day. I was tuning around HF this morning and things went very quiet very quickly. And um, so, you know, he started wiggling on leads as you do. Long story short, it was the Balin on the dipole. This comes from Ripple Tech Electronics. It's the TZ OCF 40. It's an off-center feed, uh, works on 40, 20 and 10. And it works very well. I dragged out the receipt for this, which I still had, and I purchased this in May 2009. So it's 16 years old and it's been outside for most of that time. So the enclosure is a little bit weather beaten. The non-stainless eye bolt is rusted. I won't be refitting that, I never used it. The stainless steel bolts on the side where the wires hooked up are in good condition and the SO239 appears to be in good condition. We can see on this side of the case, there is a crack actually running along there. And I know exactly why that crack is there. It's the same reason it had an electrical fault. I went to unscrew the bastard, but of course it wouldn't come apart. So it became a hacksaw job. That's the inside of it. Now it became fairly apparent what was wrong. I'm just going to turn this around. Uh, if you keep your eye on this center pin here and where the enamel copper wire is soldered, or rather was soldered, you can see that it's, it's um, that solder joint has failed. And I know why that's happened. I'll just plug a UHF male connector into this. And over all the years of blowing around in the wind, you can see how that's flexing. And ultimately, the solder joint has given way. Now, I reckon the reason why that's happened is because the way they've mounted this particular type of SO239, you can see it's recessed into the side wall of the enclosure. So what they've done, they've actually reduced the thickness of the enclosure, so it's become a lot more flimsy. So that, that's a bit of a, a, a design problem, I think. I went to my local JCAR and got a replacement enclosure. This is identical, same size, same everything. It's the HB6122, it's 1195. I went rummaging around through the, the parts bin, found one of these, I'm sure you're all familiar with these. They, they need four bolts to hold them on. Trouble is this doesn't really suit this type of case because um, if we lay that right down to the floor there, you can see that the you know, the top two bolts are passing uncomfortably close to the uh, the join in the case. So that's no good, rule that one out. I did find this, and I don't know why Ripple Tech didn't use something like this to begin with. The thread on it is quite long, and we a nut goes in from the outside. But using something like this, we don't need to, um, to recess it into the case. Now the whole point of this video is that we live in a very disposable society these days and people tend to chuck stuff away and just replace it when it's quite easy and cheaper to, uh, to fix things. It doesn't apply to everything these days because manufacturers make things non-repairable deliberately. But in the case of something like this, it's very simple. And 12 bucks for a new case versus 150 bucks is a no-brainer. <laughs> First thing to do was desolder the Balin, remove the M6 stainless steel hardware, and remove the SO239. That was a bit awkward, so I just ended up sort of pulling the case away. It had split, and it was easier just to pop it out that way. One thing we can see is the SO239 that is fitted does, doesn't have a lot of thread on it. And we can see how they've recessed it into the case. Time to drill the new enclosure. The SO239 and the M6 stainless hardware was mounted into the, into the case. Uh, all the solder points were touched up with fresh solder, likewise on the Balin itself, fresh solder there. I wasn't going to fit the, um, I wasn't going to replace the eye bolt, I, even though I had a new stainless steel one in stock. I figured it's just unnecessary weight that I don't need. Tear that out. So this, this itself weighs 233 grams. If I add the eye bolt, jumps up to 248. That's about an extra 6% of weight that I just don't need. Now to solder it up.
To minimize the chance of that solder joint fatiguing again, I had a rummage through my foam collection, found some, uh, some foam here. I, I did the usual microwave test, put, uh, put that in the microwave, run it for 30 seconds. If it starts arcing or uh, carrying on, you know it's conductive and that shouldn't be used. But these bits of foam are, are quite okay. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna wedge them down in there between the toroid and the M6 bolt head. And as you can see, that's that's uh, that's unlikely to move in the wind, which in turn should translate into uh, less less movement at the solder joint. So we'll see how that goes. Time to screw it up. And of course, don't forget to fit that seal in uh, one half of the lid. We'll uh, refit the dipole wise. Time to go outside and get the thing up in the air again. Because I have enough thread uh, left over with this particular PL259 that I'm using, I'm going to fit an extra nut, one of these. These are off the mobile antenna bases, you know, the types that have an SO239 type receiver. So, a larger diameter nut should help spread the load of that socket across the face of the enclosure. And we still have a bit of thread left over. So that's not compromising the connection at all. So that'll, uh, that's strain relieving the actual connection going into the bailing box there like that. And just as it starts raining even heavier, up we go. I could use the VNA to sweep this, but I'm just going to use the internal meter on the 7600. So AM mode, transmit, watching our SWR, slow down the CW and digital end of the band, rising to just over 1.5 up there, happy with that. 20 meters, low end of the band, rising to um, 1.6 something, that's all right. The dipole could, uh, I could shorten this just to move it up a bit, but it's pissing down outside and that's a, a job for another day. Oh, now just in case you're wondering, no, it doesn't transmit there. Again, the SWR is low at the low end of the band. It's actually quite broad on 10 meters, rising to 1.5 to 1, about 29 megs. So that's all good. Very happy with that. As you can see, not a lot of effort required. 12 bucks for a new case, a little bit of work and good as new. Thanks for watching. You'll see me next time. Cheers. Boo! Boo! That was the worst thing I ever heard. It was terrible. Horrendous. <laughs> well, it wasn't that bad. Oh, yeah? Oh, there were there parts of it I liked? Yeah, I liked a lot of it. Yeah, it was good. It I... was great. It's wonderful. Oh, bravo. More. More. Now can I say it? Yep. Go away! Scrum! Get out of here! Get out of here! Skittle! Go away! Ham's gray! Well, come on. All right.